Welcome to my living room, a zone of utter mayhem and destruction. Because the only way that I could clean out my craft room enough to fit the create room thingy, um, I had to unload the whole room, which is all my craft supplies. So I opened all of the drawers. I got the full set of drawers, not the half set. So I paid extra for a full set of drawers. Um... So far, I can see why it's worth it because I'm not a painter or a fabric-y person, so I need more drawers than I need open space for books and stuff. I have bookshelves. So this is the first portion. If I can find the video of it arriving on a pallet, it was incredibly heavy. The largest pieces are over here, and those were roughly oh, close to 80 to 100 pounds each. I had to have my husband help me. So... I'm going to try and update you through this process and then show you where it goes in my office. That's uh, my big crystal. Anyway, so we'll see how the create room goes. My dad's going to help me put it together and maybe I'll try to get a time lapse as we like assemble it in the office because I think it's going to have to be assembled in pieces before we put it in. But I'm going to try and get all these huge things. <laughs> that one was very heavy too. Uh, unloaded. Okay, I will see you when we are looking at the instructions. We're unboxing. Oh, oh my. Okay. Thank God my dad's coming. He can help me. We're a good team. Oh, happy day. You've received the dream box. It's time for your first project, assembling this giant banana hammock. Okay. So there's that, and then there's all these little baby boxes under here that seem to be tracks. I don't know what that means. Um, we will check out the instructions, uh, and I have... N Ugh, how am I going to separate this smartly? Maybe by section. We'll see. Okay, so first look. The create room is in. It's bigger than my room. It is, in fact, big enough to be a room by itself. It does not actually open all the way on that wall, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, that's my bag of, uh, support licorice. Everyone should have support licorice during a project. Anyway, my dad and I <clears throat> are pretty uniquely autistic and work really well as a team. So instead of 12 hours, we were able to do this in about four. Um, but again, my dad was a carpenter and I was his assistant for most of my childhood. So, um, here's where we're at. We will be slowly installing all the shelf supports, but my dad and I got it to this point in about four hours. So if you have a very efficient or build friendly dad, you'll be just fine. Okay, I have drug all the accoutrement hangers and the current schematical we will be working from is this. So I have to go digging through all the shelf Peggy Dealies and seeking those out. And that's slides? Fascinating. All right, well, we'll start somewhere. Okay. Okay, it has hopefully given us an idea of what we should be doing with this to make it look, well, to make it fit all the totes that I bought because I got the 80 tote max package. Okay, we can do this. This is fine. Okay, I think we're going to start with like the swing doors because I can start at one side and make it match on the other side. It's indicating that we start that one in the fifth holes up, skipping, and then tenth holes, seventeenth holes, twenty-six. So we will try to follow that. I think I was supposed to put some sort of support in there first, so I'll double check. Okay, so actually I decided to do these two big flippers first because then it's done and I don't have to look at them again. So I have the little shelf pegs. I went and found them. But I wanted to show you that you can, not with all the stuff sticking out, but if I didn't have all the stuff sticking out, I can rotate this whole table up so I can access the stuff underneath and it locks into these little holes so I can't kill myself, which is nice. Um, I will show you that in a second. Let's see if I can do this without killing myself because the, the joint genuinely scares me. It makes like a really scary sound when that big joint down there rotates. Ooh. Okay, so then you can hook 
this slide latch, or you could when it lined up. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. And that holds that side up, and then you go to the other side. And, oh, dude, come on. Okay, well, I'll get it in there, but it's so that you don't crush your head while you're putting the shelves in down here. So this is the proprietary joint under the desk, and this is the hinge that allows you to make it high at the back and low in the front like a drafting table, or you can rotate this out fully and make yourself a deeper sitting table. But otherwise, it makes a really terrifying sound that I don't like. In the current position that it's in, this folds down and doesn't move. The big desk folds down, this part doesn't move. And so it's at standing desk height. But this is my current main complaint about this, is the terrifying sound that it makes when it's rotated. But now we have our cavity underneath, the cavernous hole. You cannot close the thing with it up. It has to be down, in the down position. And now we're going to put in those two shelves. Wish me luck. Okay, I have installed the metal pegs. I wanted you to see how safe I am as I sit under this precarious thing. That's not attached, that's the cat's bridge. Um, but you can see that the legs do not lie flush when it's in the up position, and that's because they have a really cool offset hinge on them, so it's not an issue. I'm just letting you know that that's good. You did it right. There's the little locky doodles so that it won't kill us. There's all the hinges. There's more hinges under here so that this can flatten. There's the scary loud hinge, and here's where we put our shelves. Uh, additional complaint, the shelves have no little chunk out of either side to make them sit on the metal pegs. And honestly, for all of the weird custom hardware they put in this thing, for them not to just drill a stupid hole in the edge of the shelf seems a bit ridiculous, we'll say. Anyway, so first two shelves going in. Okay, evidently I didn't put in the main support shelves that are actually bolted in in this section, and I'm going to line them up with the diagram which has them level with this in the picture. Anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to show you kind of the cool proprietary cam system they have. These cams here are like Ikea cams where you have a big bolt that you shove in the back and then twist it around this. This is a different kind of cam that I've never seen before. So here is the connecting bolt. You can see that it gets wider when it's being screwed down like a drywall anchor, but it also has a butt on it so it can't come out. It has like a screw end and a butt end. And then here is where it rests into, like you set the shelf onto it. And once it's in there, you screw it down from a 45 degree angle right here. And there's a cam inside of this that turns itself and locks itself down over the little screw head right here. And I have not ever seen a cam like this before where it's pre-installed into the wood. You don't have to drop it in yourself. So that is the next thing I'm installing. You basically just shove these into a hole, levelly, obviously, and then uh, let rest the shelf on the hooks, and then reach from underneath and screw in at a 45 degree angle until you feel the mechanism turn and lock over the connecting bolt. So I just wanted to show you, they do have some pretty fancy proprietary pieces in here that are what makes this thing so expensive. It comes down to the manufacturing, honest to God. It's the same particle board as my IKEA shelves, but it's this cool manufacturing, these proprietary hinges and stuff, that's what's making this booger expensive. Okay, let's get these in here. Okay, and if for structural reasons anyone is wondering why they would want you to put a shelf in here that is screwed down, this is a divider to hold a bunch more little shelves. But look, this has a lot of play in it if you're putting a bunch of heavy stuff. So if you make it rigid, right about at this level, so it can't wiggle, it won't wiggle up here, and it won't wiggle down here. So that is the structural purpose of this. You can see I have put the pins in. I don't know if I can manage to do this one-handed. Okay, <clears throat> here's our shelf. Put it in at an angle, save yourself the trouble. And let it drop down. Okay, seated. And then we're gonna go under here 
And as you can see, there's the locking cam. And I will have to use two hands, but you're gonna turn this until it locks over the pin. So that is what we're doing with that shelf. Okay, so we're gonna start with these lightweight ones on the side here that are the skinnies. And they've done kind of a brilliant thing here. Instead of giving you 40 zillion peg holes, they have given you a little jig or a little bracket that your uh, wood will slide into, which actually adds to the strength. So these ones don't appear to correspond to any of the numbers on the page. Those all appear to go to the big box. So you can just install them until you're done. And then we also have these little cup holder uh, rod holders to hold ribbon and stuff on. Um, in my case, it'll probably hold fabric. Uh, but we can install that as well. And we'll do it to both sides. I'll show you how the drawers or the shelves slide into the brackets. Okay, been a little haphazard about it, but that's all right. So we're going to, sorry, I'm trying to film this and look at what I'm doing at the same time. It's not the easiest thing. And the door keeps moving because it's on wheels. So we're going to slide, woo, sorry, it's struggling to focus on white on white on white. So we're going to slide our shelves into these brackets. And then we also have these little acrylic cups. Very hard to see. And we can install those like this if the door wasn't swinging. Stop it. We can install those thusly. And then we have our little metal rods that will pop into them once I push it down. So let's get both of these side doors installed. Oh, last thing is to keep things from falling off the shelves, you have these. And once the shelves are in, we'll squeeze these in between like that. And they all have peg holes on them. So they'll snap in to those holes right above your shelf. So I can't do this one handed, so here we go. Okay, there's one side in. Thoughts? Don't love how easily these slide around. I will maybe glue them in once I decide I like them there, or put like a little sticky dot back there to keep them from just whoop, flying right out. So don't grab onto things and use the, those as a handle, use the door. Uh, so now we will repeat it up on the other side. Okay, so we have the two sides done. I remembered to put the hooks in the other side. I don't think I'll need as many hooks on because I'll probably put stencils in it. So those are done. I took out a shelf on each side because it wasn't mandatory to fit all my drawers. Nothing goes in the drawer department into here. So you need not worry about that. And now we shall start on these, which <clears throat> if we look at our instructions, it tells us what sets of holes we should be inserting the tracks in and we have an unholy box of tracks to start with and then we can start moving the drawers in very exciting this is tiring and i was already tired from yesterday building it in four hours so I'm just letting myself go slow kind of enjoy the process and see where i can like hang up my fabric and stuff it's fun it also looks like in the diagram that those shelves will sit upon the track dealies as well. Everything is the same depth at this point, including all the little itty bitty ones. So I might start in the middle here because that's a much smaller thing to count and I can stay standing and not hurt my back getting on and off the floor. All right, let's try it. Okay, I s installed the first one in hole number five, as it said. Here's the piece of wood, sliding, letting it pinch itself in. La -da. Repeat ad nauseum. All right, I am about halfway through putting all the little rails in. Those don't look even, but they are. It's just a trick of the eye. Uh, I just have this section less over here and all the skinny ones. If you have an arm bigger than my arm, you may struggle to get those in there. So grab someone with a skinny arm or a child that's feisty and can push really hard. Uh, if you're having any trouble getting them in there, you want to flex the middle portion and push on the middle because sometimes they bow a little bit like this and then they won't meet up in the holes there. 
So smush the middle of the plastic, thusly, and shove it in there. And then all of these will kind of be shoved in by virtue of having uh, the drawers shoved in them. Because when I shoved the shelves in, it pushed them even further into their peg holes. So we're almost done with that section. And then we can start filling her up. Okay, all the tracks are in. That was a box I randomly had in the office still from filling all of them. The boxes I already filled and they are in the living room from where I showed you before. I highly recommend doing that as a gift to yourself. Clean everything out into the boxes and do like a craft purge as you prepare for this thing because I cannot imagine taking boxes of stuff and trying to organize it now into those drawers. But this took me, oh, probably a total of two and a half hours. I was pretty slow and lazy about it. Uh, and I remembered to put the door handles on, which are right in there, before I put all the door rails on. So good for me, remembering that. I removed some shelves on these, but I will show you as I fill it up and give you my final thoughts. Also, the table did that thing where it like flips down and makes the scary noise, but I fixed it immediately, but I, I just still, I don't like the noise that comes out of those hinges. They're scary. I don't like it. Okay, so as I'm putting these in here, what I will say is these shelves are very well hooked in on their little slidey rails that look like this. These shelves are not. Their little mechanism is similar with a little clippy deal back there, but it does not really do much in the way of holding it in there. These are not coming out unless you really pull on them. And I left one of the tubs empty so you can see. This is like really in there and it's not pulling off the wall and you can push on it pretty darn hard. It's not hard to pull out, you can just push on it hard. So I just wanted to kind of show you the mechanism there. And you can push it <clears throat> down and make sure it's on the track before you shove it back. There we go. So I wanted to show you how the mechanism worked on those. So there's definitely some like pull, like they're not sliding in there. The ones that are on the shelves, very slidey. The ones that are on a track, very grippy. So, I wanted to show you that as I continue along here, and we will keep going. Okay, I think most of the drawers are in, and I'm getting close to done finagling things. One of the things that I don't have a lot of use for are all these ribbon slash rope holders. What I wanted to do was hang fabric from them, but then I would have to remove all the shelves, and it is a it uses up all the space. So my thought was, I ordered these steel, sticky backed, white will blend in with things, uh, magnetic, well they're not magnetic, but a magnet will stick to them, strips because you can hold up fabric with magnets, and the mechanism closes like this, I will show you. So. We have the doors here. One has drawers, I'm gonna trip on this, so I'll move it. So this is the wheelie beelies. This thin door has no wheels and closes. You then, I'm gonna have to move this or else it will fall and make a horrible, scary sound. Ooh! Okay, this now rotates uh, about 240 degrees, I guess. It's not a 360 because it's not going in a circle. Oh my god, this is a lot heavier. Okay, so this rotates around to technically close one side of it. Oh my god. <clears throat> oh, I had something in the way. It made a horrible noise. Scary. Okay. Everything's falling. Okay, so then this is technically closed. Now, that means that this face right here Aha, there is some room. There is some clearance. So that means that when it's partially opened, mm, heavy pushing, when it's partially opened, 
I can put those magnet strips here and hang my fabric on that and it will still close. So, highly recommend the magnet strips if you are interested in maximizing your fabric holding capabilities or if you wish to display some fabric. Anyway, that is the update because these are not of huge use to me, but I've gotten like my marker holders in, Thule type things. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna reuse this old makeup drawer tower for small tools because I have used up all of my other little doodly bobs. So I've used not one word that actually relates to this product, but um, I hope this gives you some ideas of how you could customize your piece yourself. Okay, that worked out great. I grabbed a bunch of needle minders because the magnets that it came with were grossly insufficient to hold up even a sheet of paper, let alone a piece of fabric. So I have grabbed some of my good uh, rare earth magnets here that are attached to needle minders that are not currently in use. And I've made myself a fun little place to hang my works in progress where they won't get dirty and get dusty. And ooh, look, you can see all the leaves on my sashiko print. Ooh. Anyway, that worked out great. Uh, highly recommend that you do that. These came from Amazon. If I remember, I will try to link the exact ones because they were, I think, 14 inches exactly in width and the gap that I had to deal with was 15 inches exactly. So that worked out well. And now I have a place to hang my works in progress. I love it. And I guess, well, we're kind of down to flipping the desk up and uh, finishing off our storage. So I will show everybody how everything works when we have more natural light in the morning. I would like to share one of my main complaints. This big proprietary plastic hinge that you install is made so that if I lift the table up while it's in this position, it will be at roughly standing height to my belly button and I can stand and sew from a standing table height. Now, if I want to make the table both longer and lower, like perhaps a sewing or a work table, basically level with the shelf behind it, all you do is click it forward like that. There's very, very little resistance to that popping forward. And if you don't push it up very firmly and be very sure that it is locked and loaded into there, that it is going to drop down and scare the ever loving crap out of you with that noise. So you lift, you push it up, Ugh. thusly and it, and it still feels wiggly and scary no matter what you do it's a brilliant hinge design but again this is all it takes to knock it off the hinge that was it I just that was my hand I'll show you what my hand is doing and then <clears throat> she's back so this is this is the amount of pressure and granted I don't know my own strength my autism means I like grip the hell out of stuff, but I've been working on that, one. And two, I don't think I'm pushing that hard. Like two fingers. Jesus. It scares the hell out of me every time. And it does it if you like reach over the edge. You saw how little pressure I had to apply. And it's like a 40 pound table. So you have to really shove it to get it back up there. So if that's not an issue for you, great. If it is an issue for you, you won't like that sound at all because it, it's just, it's very loud and the entire thing cannot close with it out, without it being in this hinge position. So if that sound scares you a bunch, again, that's all it takes to make it drop down like that and make a scary, horrible sound. So that is my number one complaint over the entire dream box so far terrifying hinge sounds very large heavy thing dropping god forbid somebody's hand was down there it's it's 
smushed. And it's just the resistance of the hinge is not high enough for the forward motion. That is my number one complaint so far. Everything else, pretty great. Okay, so before I give you my final thoughts and show you the tubs, which I realized I didn't do um, specifically while we went through this process, this is what I'm referring to about some of the things that are a little bit a bummer. I still like this product. I still think it's a great idea. I can fit these size hefty tubs. These are just the ones from Walmart. I think they're about six bucks each. Those fit very nicely. I would have to move the other two shelves up and then I could probably fit no more than six if I took all the shelves out. If I took just this shelf out, I could probably set a sewing machine on this shelf. So it will fit a lot of stuff. Now, here's that joint we've been talking about from the other side. Here's another thing that's a little bit annoying about this. These are the legs. If I leave it with it in this joint position and fold down the table from there and leave the legs short, it makes a drafting table that's tilted up at the back and down in the front. Very cool. However, if I want to leave it in the standing position, <clears throat> I can no longer fold the legs up and have them fit within the thing. So you can fold the legs up, but you cannot put it away because it will no longer clear this edge. So if I want to use this as a standing desk, which I would like to do, I have to pop the legs down to the highest point, leave the joint in that position, and then fold it down towards me. These are not super easy for my Ehlers-Danlos beaten up hands to get out. So wear a glove or a grippy, grippy mat for your hand. So I do find that a little annoying that you have to actually reconfigure it to completely put it away. However, on that note, now that this thing is loaded with all my stuff, I really don't think you would be moving this all that much. It is heavy as hell. It is probably four to 600 pounds. Like I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating because many of the boxes I picked up and my husband helped me carry in were at least 80 to 100 pounds each. If you are thinking that you are going to like roll this up every night on carpet, no, you're not. It's too hard. I've got this on hard, like fake hardwood, but hardwood floors. And it is, it takes force. And when I pull on the door, it moves the entire cabinet because there's not really... From what I can see, there's not any locks on the wheels, so it's going with you if you pull on the door and, and aren't like, like hugging it around the body of the square. It's heavy, like real, real heavy, <laughs> like amazingly heavy. So I have to go around the side here and grab it from the front, and I that's, that weighs at least, at least 100 pounds. To roll and it is rolly but it weighs a lot so if you want to put this on carpet don't you you will hate it because you will not be able to close it up I think this is most useful for people who want to leave it out because they can and just use it as a really excellent organization thing and then they technically can close it all up when somebody comes over and then you just have a big white Ikea cabinet that's bizarrely cube shaped in the middle of your room. It's, it's like an edifice. It's like you're installing a furnace in your house. It's so large. So those are my main complaints about the table leggies. And the table system is great. It's brilliantly designed. It's just one tiny annoying step that matters to me because I have sore hands. So anyway, I will show you what these boxes look like. They come with dividers that you can slide in on the uh, small ones and the medium ones. They have dividers, as you can see, that slide in and give them some rigidity. The big guys do not have dividers, but you can also see how, like, you can really wing the things around 
And uh, oh, now I've got I've got it stuck on something. It's not it's not the drawer's fault. I put too much stuff in there. But you can see that they really slide sturdily. Like I haven't I have yet to have one of these pop out. None of them have like come out. I will say it was hard to put them in there. If you are a woman or a human, for that matter, just anyone, if with large forearms, which I have from squeezing everything to death, uh these were not super fun. I had a lot of soreness in my wrist and my elbow from flexing my arm to put these in. I haven't seen anybody mention that as something, but as a disabled person, that matters to me. What do I have left? Because I don't know what to do with all these drawers yet. I have a zillion of these jars. Don't know what to do with them. Don't know if people just have like exorbitant amounts of buttons perhaps, but I don't yet, so I will have to find a use for the jars. Maybe I will put pins in them or something. Uh, other things I have left, the uh, earthquake strap, which I will install, uh, some paint that they give you to touch up, and then like any extra findings I had. And then this is the extra shelves that I have. I think these are in case anything breaks. These are extra dividers that I just didn't use. More extra dividers. I just haven't screwed in the extra screws on the door and like one or two door shelves. So that's all I have left after this adventure. And those are my thoughts. I would love to know what you think or if I can answer any other questions for you because I just hadn't seen any of the things I talked about talked about. And I will do my best to, tr well, if I can't do it, I can't, but I'll try to get a video of me using the mechanism on the table. But if I can't, I thank you all so much. I invite you to come visit me on my Facebook group called The Weaver Birds or come join my Patreon where people like me and Karma Hudson are coming up with all kinds of fun stuff and testing out patterns. And that is my patron shout out for this video. I will put the table down, I think, and just show you the different options as a final segment. Okay, so when folding out the legs, you are warned profusely in the instructions to make sure you do that, because that's what locks it and keeps it from folding in and killing you, because these are offset hinges that are very brilliantly designed, but also look whack, and yet the, the legs come out at the right angle. So I, I can't explain it, but make sure you push, push to lock. And this is the fully up position of the hinge and the medium position of the legs. So we should get a drafting table in this configuration. Ah, problem alerted. So the desk is heavy. So you have to push up on it a little bit to undo the safety doodle bob here, slide latch, whatever it is. I told you, oh, do you don't do the thing. We got it. But when I try to push up on this, oh, look, look who jumped out of the joint position. The devil, the devil, the sound maker. So make sure that it's in the fully upright and locked position at the base before you fold the hinge down and undo your safety latches or it's going to make that crazy sound again. Okay, I have folded it down. It is a slanty drafting table as you can see the legs are folded back which looks crazy but if we elongate them it will then become a standing desk and then I will show you what happens if we flatten out the hinge so this is the drafting table angle and you can even make yourself a low drafting table by lowering the legs by another one because it's only on the middle position and then dropping down uh, the hinge in the back. So you do get quite a few different options and it does feel sturdy. It's a 35 pound tabletop. You will have no problem putting a sewing machine on this. I mean, not on the slanted section, but I will show you the other ways. Okay. This is standing desk height. No angle at the back, tallest setting on the legs. And you can definitely I don't think it's too shaky to work on if you're using it normally like a table. If you need something that literally can't move, well, bolt it to the wall. But you can still reach things back there, kind of. There is a hole there for you to put power cords through. So you wanted to throw your Cricut in here. 
Okay, now I will show you it on the lower settings. It also does not advise you to climb under the table, but I don't know why that would be unsafe unless you didn't have the lock position on the legs. Oh my god, I don't think I checked it before I folded it down. I could have killed myself, but I didn't. Okay, I will show you the lowest position. Okay, we're going to live dangerously. I'm trying to film this into a one-handed safety latch. Off, good God. Okay, and now we want this one to come forward now. So I'm going to kind of hook my arm under here. Oh, sweet Mary. And then that's it. That's all it needed to do. I'm going to follow it down. And this is what makes it a desk height. Wow, I'm really proud of myself for just managing that squat. Okay, let me show you what it looks like from up high. Apparently I needed it on the shortest leg option, not the middle, because it is <laughs> tipping backwards <laughs> towards it. So, if you want it at desk height, shortest leggies. Medium leggies is for drafting table. High, highest leggies is for the... um the standing desk. But I just wanted you to see how easy it was to pop that scary joint and I will show you what it's like to pick it back up because <clears throat> it's not light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. Okay, so it stays straight and we push it back until it clicks. Did you click? Are you clicked? I trust none of you. And then it does... Yep, yeah, it's locked. No one's tipping forward except its top part. This would be tipping forward if it wasn't locked right. And it does require a little bit of upward lift to get these in here. This is not a lightweight table by any stretch of the imagination. So its own natural weight puts a little oomph that you need to lift. Ah! Oh, but not do that. See, you lift it and that joint goes noodles. It just takes some getting used to, but that is my main complaint is the scary sound that makes. All right, well, I think that is most of the table positions. I'm gonna fix the legs so that I can fold this up and we can take a final look. Okay, and then theoretically to put away our table after we've put all of our crap away underneath it, we're gonna come over and undo our safety latches, not pushing on them. We don't wanna anger the base. Don't push. And then we stand back grab the edge of the heavy table. Don't, the, the legs do that. It's okay. They seem to fold back in on their own. Oh, no. Oh, see, it did the leggies. No, this is my main complaint. It flipped itself down because I was not two handing the table to keep it locked into that upward position. That is my only complaint. I feel like the upward lock position should be much stronger on this proprietary hinge. Okay, well, now I'll fix this. Okay, the devil is back in the basket. Anyway, I probably will just leave it in the standing desk height because it's better for me to stand while I'm learning to sew anyway. It's good for the back, at least my back, maybe not yours. But I am really, really happy with this. It makes me feel more mobile. I definitely feel like all my stuff is in one place. I have room to fit more stuff should I need to. Uh, I feel very organized. I think that if you are a person who is um, ADHD or struggles to organize yourself using the guides that they provided, which I will try to show you here, they show you several different ways that you can install your shelves and where to install them, etc. It tells you how to install the little brackets. And then let me also show you it gives you multiple options for if you, whoop, if you only bought the 40 tote system, but I bought the extra totes. So I pretty much followed everything to a T other than the doors. I don't know what I will need those jars for uh, unless I start collecting more moss. Cause it's not enough to fit dye stuffs in you guys. Anyway, I wanted you to kind of get a look at what the instructions looked like. You're also getting a view of all my weird supplies everywhere. But you can see they've had, they had everything labeled really great. Everything was, um, as long as you followed the instructions, good. 
The only part I remember thinking was misdrawn and missized was sliding in the back panels of the main box. The uh, wittiest or the smallest panel depicted in the drawing was not the smallest panel where it actually fit into the item. But I hadn't seen anybody show how the instructions are broken down. It's at least as good as uh, any Ikea thing I've put together. I've put together beds from Ikea, uh, bookshelves, bookshelves with doors. I'm pretty familiar with the Ikea system. I would say that this is of as high a quality and also has some weird little cool proprietary items like the connecting bolts that had the unique screw system. I thought that was really great. Uh, and I like supporting a company that makes stuff in my home country. So we're at least shipping less stuff across the seas. And I just wanted to give you my honest experience and what I thought about this as a person who is A, disabled and has hurt hands, B, uh, has experience building stuff with my dad, and C, I consider myself a pretty, pretty successful organizer. So I think that this is a great option if you can invest in yourself. I really think you should. If you need all the other add-ons, I don't know because I didn't buy any because this was expensive enough. I think it came out to roughly $3,000 US uh, with free delivery and the extra set of tubs, which was an additional, I think, $400 because they are proprietarily made. Having molds made of plastic hinges, things that are specifically matched to your system. These are all proprietary. I've never seen these anywhere else. So these people are paying for massive research and development for all this stuff to work. Uh, I just, I hope that this was helpful to you. And if it helped you make a decision or you have any other questions, please, please, please ask them in the comments. I'd be so grateful for that, um, just for the algorithms. And also because I like to help everybody out and let you make informed decisions. Um, the cat has not used it as a jumping point yet. He saw it move and that scared him. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Bye!